as we are gathered this morning to worship God together you may be wondering i'm sitting at home there is no one else with me some of you may be watching this alone there is no one to sit with you to have fellowship with but remember first of all we are fellowshipping with him with god with god the father calling him abba father and uh, jesus he said hey when you come in my name i'm there i'm there so don't worry even though no other believer no other brother sister is with you don't worry jesus is there because he has promised that and moreover we have the comfort of the holy spirit with us always i say this jesus is the lord of the church whereas holy spirit is the lord in the church he's here he's here so can we bow our heads for a minute and can we pray together can we pray our dear heavenly father we thank you for this beautiful day this bright morning where we could come and worship you father in the name of your son and our savior and lord jesus christ jesus thank you for your presence right now in our midst thank you because you have promised and you always keep your promise lord and again bless that holy spirit we want to thank you too because you are here you are the one alongside of us and you are our teacher you are our guide you are our leader here and it is you who will convict us lord and more than that you are our comforter lord at this time we need your comfort holy spirit of god we need your comfort lord as we are going to spend some time with you singing praises unto you lord help us to sing from our heart lord so that heaven will rejoice master bless each one of us especially the ones who are sitting at home and watching and hearing lord let them not be spectators but let them truly be participants lord so that together we will lift up the name of jesus master for the glory of god the father we are doing it master thank you father for hearing our prayers because we are prayed in the name of jesus christ our lord amen amen so i have a request don't be just a spectator be a participant that means when we sing just sing along with us so that together we are singing together we are praising together we are thanking him and together we are worshiping him so here we go this morning i want to greet you all wherever you are one more time i greet you all in the name of jesus christ who is not only our lord he is our savior he is our best friend and uh, as we spend some time before the word of god i'm sure the holy spirit is going to minister to each one of us this morning are you ready please take your bibles please take your bibles maybe the words will come on the screen that's okay but it's a good thing to take your bible okay wherever you are seated take your bible open it up go to the old testament one verse it's a book called micah i don't know how many of you know that there is a book called micah <laughs> micah 4 4 that means chapter 4 and verse 4 there's a beautiful verse there but they shall sit every man under his wine and under his fig tree and none shall make them afraid for the mouth of the lord of hosts hath spoken it every man shall sit under his wine and his fig tree and no one 
will make them afraid this is a beautiful verse today we are sitting at homes maybe you are upset maybe you are sad i know many are sad because as i always say many times as a church we were having fun on sunday mornings coming together worshiping having fellowship hearing the sermon sharing everything was good but suddenly everything changed a honorable prime minister came on the tv and he said hey dear citizens on sunday can we go on a self imposed curfew janata curfew people were shocked people were upset we know why he said that don't think he is against christians for our health sake for the safety of our nation as responsible citizens of this nation we need to obey that that's why we all choose to remain indoors so that we can have fellowship with god first and again with our family members so that's why i'm telling don't be upset don't be sad be happy because there is safety when you stay indoors many times we think that uh, there is safety in the company of believers yes that's true but again the bible says there is safety no one will make you afraid why don't be afraid of anything you are safe you are your safety comes from the lord and again we know in the book of uh, exodus we know when the israelites they were leaving egypt the last day the passover they had to do something they had to take a lamb cut it and then apply the blood on the door post and because they did it they know they were saved death never entered none of their houses so i want to tell you everyone who are hearing hearing me we are safe we are safe the blood of jesus had made us safe so our if our houses are covered under the blood if our dear ones are covered under the blood nothing there to be afraid of so we can safely and securely sit under the wine and the fig tree so i'm sure as a family you are sitting in your home and uh, i want to tell you that you are safe you are sitting in the safest zone now nothing will touch you nothing will affect you because we have been protected by the blood of jesus this is what i want to tell you first of all so let's relax and uh, sit before the lord for what the lord is trying to teach us this morning i was uh, sitting in prayer in the past two days maybe honestly speaking day before yesterday the, the whole night uh, i was very restless i couldn't sleep i was just uh, walking i was praying i'd go and sit in my office and uh, Uh, open the bible and read lord what is it and honestly speaking more than any time in the past today i really prayed lord give me a message a word from you so that i can give it to the church i know that uh, those of you are hearing me you're not from house of prayer alone i know you're sitting in many parts of the world and hearing me honestly speaking i'm not addressing my local congregation back in trivandrum i am addressing the body of christ right now i know that i know that so i am i am humble to stand before you as a as a uh, what do you call a minister of the gospel and to proclaim something what the holy spirit has deposited into my heart so that i can share with you so much, after much prayer i am coming here to share something from the word when we come together and sit in our homes the first thing the lord is asking us is to repair and rebuild our altars to repair and rebuild our altars we know the altar that's one of the sacred place the altar 
when it is broken in the old testament we see in many occasions it was broken it is in ruins but whenever it was in ruins it was broken the children of god they were in mm, they were actually being defeated but every time they came back and recognized hey our altars have been broken and whenever they took a step to repair it first or to rebuild it then only the fire of the lord came on it so this morning i want to tell you we need to repair the altar number one the altar means okay the place where we meet with god i'm so sad to see many believers they come to church to see god they come on a sunday morning to a particular building or a place to worship god but my question is only in the church can we worship god no is it only in the church is it only we come as an assembly no first of all remember our salvation it was very personal i went to the lord and confessed my sins and it is i who invited jesus to come into my life as my savior and lord it is i i made the personal decision to accept the lord and to be born again that is something very personal so after that remember i have a personal relationship with god through jesus because i accepted him again then i receive the holy spirit where he comes into my life and he comes inside and indwells in me that means i am become the temple of god i am the temple of the holy ghost that's what the bible says paul very clearly says know you not that you are the temple of god it's not a building it's not a particular place somewhere no it's here it's me i am the temple of god holy spirit is inside of me and i am the temple because god is inside me okay god is living in me inside of me so i am a god carrier actually i am not god okay but i am carrying his presence wherever i go i carry his presence so when such people come together for a fellowship to worship god we call it as a church that's it good but we know that uh, many times we come and hide in the church this morning the word of the lord is coming to us when the first people a man and his wife that's what exactly the bible says he and his wife the man and his wife god created them in his own image every evening god used to come down and have fellowship with them walking with them talking with them enjoying their company all the three they all the three they were having fun having god with them walking with god having fellowship with god what a joy it was but suddenly something happened they found out that they are naked and immediately they started doing something to cover their nakedness but unfortunately that didn't work by the time it's evening god is going to come down when they heard his footsteps the bible says they ran and hid under a tree so god came down and is looking for them and uh, he's asking hey where are you man where are you where are you this morning the lord is asking you and me hey where are you where are you can i tell you something we were hiding behind the tree can i tell it in another way we very cleverly we were hiding behind the tree called the church we were hiding behind the so called sunday service we were hiding behind the activities and to cover the shame some of us even do ministry 
for many ministry has become a cover up but the lord is seeing all this tamasha and he is coming and asking hey where are you so we need to answer that question god is asking you where are you to each one of you god is asking where are you where are you we cannot hide anymore church we cannot hide anymore little children they play hide and seek all these days we were playing hide and seek as a church we were playing hide and seek but remember it's not we always go and find god he found found us he came in search of us and he's asking where are you where are you so this morning i want to tell you this is the first question that each one of us has to answer where are we i'm talking about repairing and rebuilding the altar and that starts with me and my relationship with god remember it's my personal relationship with god no one comes in between that it's between me and god so god is asking son daughter where are you where are you what will be our answer and uh, we are naked that's why we are hiding here god is asking who told you you are naked did you eat something which i asked you not to immediately they started <laughs> putting the blame blame shift i call it remember he doesn't want any explanation he is only asking did you eat like filling a f- form yes or no tick the appropriate column yes or no instead of telling yes or no we just love to give explanations this morning beloved can we stop all the explanations can we just say lord we have sinned we have sinned we have sinned let's stop covering it let's stop hiding behind the so called sacred church and the church activities we pastors leaders we are very busy doing ministry but many times even our ministries are a cover up but the lord is exposing every cover ups in other words we are very smart now all over the world they are putting on masks <laughs> i think where all the world is putting masks the lord is asking us to take off our masks so that we can be ourselves before the lord because his eyes are seeing everything nothing is hidden before him he is seeing what adam is doing and eve is doing he was seeing even when they were trying to cover up he was even seeing when they were going and hiding behind the tree but still he is asking where are you so this morning we need to answer that question where am i where am i am i hiding was i hiding all these days in a church on a sunday morning very cleverly coming and hiding in a church hiding in a worship service hiding in a fellowship of believers let's say lord yes i was hiding why were you doing that i was naked who told you remember they cannot cover their shame finally to cut the story short god himself stitched a garment and clothed them bible very clearly says god clothed them like a mother going and clothing the little tiny baby because they are never worn clothes they don't know how to wear a shirt or a pant i don't know what kind of cloth he stitched so look at the love of god he only wanted them to say we have sinned in other words instead of confessing 
we will go around and make all kinds of ex- excuses and explanations but the only thing god wants us is to come to his presence and say god i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry is only a two word sentence i'm sorry but do you know that's the hardest sentence to say especially to god so this morning as families we need to tell god lord i'm sorry as the head of the family husbands fathers you had to say i'm sorry because god is asking adam adam is responsible for his household but very cleverly he says it, it it's the woman that's the problem with every husband we will never take the blame we will never take responsibility we always try to put it on our wives let's not do that so god was so kind and loving to cover the shame today god has come to your house seeking you looking for you and he's asking hey where are you where are you were you hiding in the church all these years now he has come searching for you just go to him and say i'm sorry god i was i was hiding i was trying to cover up that's one thing our relationship with god that's the first altar which we need to repair and rebuild the next is our family altar i was asking someone yesterday do you have a mat at home buy a mat honestly nowadays we don't even have one when the little baby was born maybe we had a neat mat with sheets and blankets and all to put the baby sometimes but after that there is no mat but in kerala especially in the olden times there were only mats even we used to sit down on the floor and have a meal and even we were sleeping on mats and more than that it is not for sleeping or not for eating those mats were there for sitting and praying but those mats are missing these days i am going to tell for the next service the malayalam service i am going to tell before we start i am going to tell if anyway you are sitting at home please get up and walk and take a mat and come spread it down and if possible comfortably sit and please you husband and wife and call all your children as a family gather that's the wine and the victory under the wine and the victory you have to have that altar the altar sad to say that altar is missing last week uh, as you know that uh, we couldn't meet together so we were meeting at different homes after the meeting i started getting reports people were very excited people sent me messages hey what wow, pastor what is wonderful we met and we 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 could uh, me- make friends and uh, oh wow that is wonderful we had breakfast together and we had lunch a lot of good reports but one family came and said hey pastor we went to a home and there was a mother there she is not a so called believer like as you say she is part of a traditional orthodox church but when she heard that the family is going to assemble and have fellowship home church house church we called it last week she was dressed all well dressed as if she is going to the church and with much reverence she came and sat with the children to attend that house church i am asking you did you get dressed up for church because the church is coming home are you just sitting casually i was so happy with that mother 
she know how to give reverence to god and his things sadly today's believers we are too casual don't feel guilty if you are watching this in your <laughs> clothes which you are wearing at home that's okay but malayalam i have to make it very sure go dress up and come come be here wash your face <laughs> as you come to church come before another family called me and said pastor last week was wow wonderful oh i was sitting in the at the dining table i was just eating my puttu and palam puttu palam kolaichu adichondu pastor na prasangam kettu puttu palam kolaichu adichondu palli po i just wanted to show the difference a so called believer who worships in spirit and in truth is very casually sitting in the dining table eating his breakfast and watching the watching the live stream that's why i told in the beginning don't watch this live stream we were hiding in the church that's the reason why the lord broke it and scattered us that's why we are sitting at home but remember sitting at home is not a bad thing for a time being we may have to sit at home god told moses ask them to apply this blood and be locked inside sometimes the the word quarantine you think that uh, it's a medical terminology no or it's something to do with no it's not in the secular world it started in the bible do you know in leviticus chapter 13 the bible is very clear god told moses hey if someone has a, a white what do you call patch or some color discoloration yeah and uh, some skin disease take him inside and shut him inside let him be quarantined for 7 days seventh day the priest has to come and check whether is there any difference if there is no difference seven more days so total 14 days <laughs> 14 day quarantine this is not been imposed by the health department it has already been imposed by god in his holy law in the bible it is written you may be wondering where is it written leviticus chapter 13 chapter after the sermon you can discuss on it <laughs> okay so that's it god has asked us sometimes we may have to shut ourselves inside so that is safety when we are shut in that's a safety 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 so our altar first of all with god first and number two with our family next with our family next to the previous verse the pre not that verse you have to be inside for 7 days that's the verse okay so take that verse away uh second thing again i say our problem with the church today is we are so self centered in other ways we are so selfish and we don't care about our brother the next question which god asked to a man is hey where is your brother where is your brother you know we know the story at that time there was only four people adam eve cain abel Cain and Abel they went with an offering God was pleased with one fellow and his offering God was not pleased with the another fellow the other fellow and his offering the guy who was not accepted by God and whose offering also was not accepted he got so angry he got so wild and went and killed his brother after killing he is coming back as if nothing happened 
in the church we come sunday after sunday as if nothing happened during the past one week how many brothers have we killed hey i didn't kill anybody if you say a harsh word you have killed him you have killed her that's what the bible says so after doing all this murder we come with an offering and we come to worship god and we are very happily coming to church to worship and we worship and we enjoy and we have a nice time but god is asking where is your brother where is your brother the first question was where are you what's your relationship with god do you have a personal relationship with god that's your personal altar number 2 where are the others in your own family where's your wife where's your husband where are your children where are your parents where is your brother where is your sister the ones who are connected with you do you come together and do you have an altar in kerala in the past in a christian home whether they are catholics or orthodox or csi or mathoma or pentecost or salvation army or brethren or any church they used to have a family altar every morning and evening especially in the evening when the sun sets they will light a lamp because there was no electricity and they will put the mat and the children will come the wife will come the mother will come and the husband or the father also will join and they will all will start singing songs and the people who walk through the road they will be hearing the sound of singing from every christian homes and then they will be reading the bible and they will be sharing and the bible is very clear the fathers have to teach the children the head of the family the husband the father has to give the directions give the guidelines from the word of god the scripture it is very mandatory that the head of the family has the responsibility to teach his family members the word of god the scriptures the bible is very clear on that and then in some houses i know everyone have to pray starting from the youngest to the oldest everyone have to pray and that's how the family altars were there the lamp was always burning the fire was always there at the altar today morning can i ask you that question is the fire burning in the altar malayalathil choikkum aduppu kattichittu ippa etra naalai korachoda kadathi parna അടുപ്പിനകത്ത് ചാരത്തിനകത്ത് ഇപ്പം പൂച്ച കയറി കിടക്കുക ഇതാ സത്യം എന്നാൽ ആ പൂച്ച ഇറക്കി വിട്ടിട്ട് ആ ചാരമൊക്കെ ഒന്ന് വാരി കളഞ്ഞിട്ട് ഒന്ന് നമുക്കൊന്ന് കത്തിക്കാമോ അടുപ്പ് ക്യാൻ ബി ടേക്ക് എ ഡിസിഷൻ ടുഡേ ലോഡ് ഐ വോണ്ട് ടു ലൈറ്റ് അപ്പ് ദി ഓൾട്ട് ലോഡ് ഐ വോണ്ട് ടു സീ ഫയർ ഇൻ ദി ഓൾട്ട് ലെറ്റ് ദ ഫയർ ബി ബേണിങ് ഇൻ ദി ഓൾട്ട് ലോഡ് let the fire be burning in the altar of my family master can we make a decision if you make that decision today you are safe under your wine and under your victory remember it's not hiding at the church it is not playing hide and seek with god and with other believers today god has found out he has come all the way to your home and is asking this question where are you then he is again asking where is your brother we need to answer these two questions and only when we answer that we can proceed so this morning i want to encourage all of you who are watching this live stream last week we could have the fancy of having one or two families with us in every home this is known is with you 
that's okay god allowed that god permitted that because he want to deal with you personally he want to personally talk to you he don't want to put you down before other families he don't want to put you down in the church service that's why he chose to come to your house asking hey where are you and where's your brother so this morning can we repair the broken altar can we rebuild the broken altar can be once the altar is set definitely when we cut the firewood and put it there and then take the animal and just kill it and uh, remove the skin and cut it again place it there do you know when elijah did everything in the proper order finally he didn't have to light the <laughs> lamp no the altar no fire came from above so my prayer is okay these days let the fire come from above on our altars that means all our houses all our people at the home we will be filled by the holy spirit so that we will we will be we will have that life of god inside of us so that we will be full of love of god and full of the life of god so that wherever we go there will be life there will be life radiating there will be love radiating especially when people are so afraid when people are so much in panic this is the time you and me can make the difference definitely the the places of work children the places where you study even in your neighborhood everywhere we can make a difference how when the altar is burning we will have the fire of god burning inside of us simply means the love of god burning inside of us and that love when we are full of that love what will spill out is that love what will overflow there'll be that love of god why because many times our hearts are not full of god's love it's full of something else that why many times something is overflowing which we don't want that to happen but many times the reality is hate anger bitterness all kinds of things which we never wanted but unfortunately that's what is overflowing out of us i was laughing yesterday <laughs> on thursday evening i think when our prime minister said i want all indians to clap your hands at least take two vessels and clap it and uh, let's appreciate the health workers wonderful thing wonderful thing in other countries actually people are already doing it it's good that we indians definitely we should do that because our health workers wow a big salute to them we should give a standing ovation for them for the kind of work they are doing may god bless them but i was why i was laughing is when we come to church many times we are very reluctant to clap hands and worship god but now our dear prime minister is telling hey guys clap hands clap hands i was really laughing when we say in the church hey let's let's clap hands and praise and worship sing songs we are very serious at church but now god has to tell our prime minister to tell us to clap hands so church <laughs> will you clap hands clapping hands shows how much we appreciate what god is doing how much we praise him how much we thank him how much we worship him so the bible says with all your strength love him and because we love him we express that love through our worship that's what we are doing so church can we do that but we can do that only when our altars are repaired and rebuilt i'm going to stop here now
God has a plan for every family. Each one of us God has a plan. And when we reconcile with God and when we reconcile with one another we will make the difference. First of all in my life when I come and reconcile with God I am blessed. When I reconcile with my family members we are blessed. And when all these family reconcile family members come together and meet as a church the church is blessed. And remember when the church is blessed the nation will be blessed. The nation will be healed. The nations will prosper. The prosperity of the nation, the healing of the nation, the blessing of the nation rest upon the church, the church. I want to tell you the church is responsible for the blessing of the nation. If at all instead of being blessed if the nation is going through through such a time like this don't blame anyone don't blame the government don't blame even satan let's take the blame and say lord we are sorry for what we were in doing in the past at the same time lord we are sorry for what we were doing hiding in the church covering our nakedness with all kinds of activities instead Lord thank you for your love that came in such of us Lord we confess that we have sinned against you we confess our sins and we humble ourselves and we look to you this is the prayer today morning we should be praying can we pray that prayer the bible says in second chronicles 7:14 if only my people who are called by my name humble themselves and seek his face and pray and leave their wicked ways i will hear from heaven and i will forgive their sins first number 2 and as a bonus the land will be healed so the healing of the land is in the repentance of the church i always repeat this phrase almost every week the healing of the land depends upon the repentance of the church can we pray together Heavenly Father we thank you for this time. Lord as we have come and heard your word. Lord we confess that our altars were broken. We were in ruins Lord. And we were even in shame. The Gentiles around us they are asking where is your God? If there is a loving God why these are happening? Many times Lord we don't have a clear answer to give them but we know the answer is us when we repent Lord the nation will be healed Lord we choose to repent so that we will rebuild and repair the altar so that there will be fire again master there will be the love kindling in our hearts Lord and that love will go out Lord and touch this nation master lord i pray for every family who are participants this morning in this service lord bless each one of them every person so that they will be blessed wherever they are hearing and watching and participating lord in any part of the world let them be blessed lord so that we as a body of christ we will rise up lord as an army and we will live for the glory of god and for the extension of your kingdom master thank you lord for hearing our prayers in jesus name we pray amen 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 now i want you to do something you have heard the message don't just walk away if you assemble there as a family just take some time talk to each other share from the word and uh, before closing all of you pray 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 for one another pray for the nation especially more than i praying from this place if you can unite and agree and pray that'll be a blessing 
and uh, not only our nation will be healed even for your needs you can pray now as a family pray pray and the lord will bless you bless you the lord will bless you and don't forget now the altar has been repaired and rebuilt let the fire be always burning out that altar god bless you god bless you god bless you